Welcome to season two of the Bowtie Guy and Wife podcast. I'm James Horton, and I'm here with my wife, Dana Horton, and we make up the dynamic duo, Bowtie Guy and Wife. On today's episode, episode 40, we're going to be discussing back to school. Dana, wife, Bowtie Guy and Wife, what you got to say about back to school season? It's hectic in a lot of families. Back to school is my favorite time of year. Back to school evokes emotion and excitement for me like many people enjoy Christmas. It is just the best time of year. I like that. um, A fresh start. It's a new beginning. It's reconnecting with old friends or colleagues. It's um, meeting a new batch of students. It's a fresh start. And for me, it's just like Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. But isn't that the beauty of education though? That sense of renewal that, you know, imagine if you, imagine if you looped with your kids K through 12. I, that's why we don't do that. We have this season of renewal every year. It's in perpetuity. New new year, new people, new chances, new opportunities. Speaking of looping, I would love to loop. I would love to yeah. But see, have you ever had, have you ever been approached about that? Um, no. It's not very common here. It's not common uh, around here in the Southeast, uh, but uh, I guess in smaller populations, I mean, especially through the Midwest, um, uh, that's a little bit more prevalent. So back on the back to school theme, speak speak to back to school season. All right. So you're working on your to-do list. It's growing. You've got paperwork to complete. You've got a classroom to set up. You've got a classroom to organize. You've got a classroom to decorate. Wait a second. Teachers don't just walk in the first day? Absolutely not. And then you have <laughs> to add meetings, school-wide meetings. Professional development. Professional development. Meetings with your team. Um, curriculum meetings. Pacing. Meetings, meetings, meetings. Let me stop and you for you a second. got to work in your room. When teachers come back, you talk about meetings and greetings what it what speak to the fact where it's almost like a family reunion every August. Ooh, yeah. So. No, so what's it like? So you come back that first day back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and listeners of this podcast. You look, you just need to prepare that first day back. You're not getting anything. Back. It's nothing but pageantry, baby. No. It's catching up. It's a family reunion, and you need to treat it as such. Yes. So we always joke about wanting to go right in that first day and get started and tackle that to do list and just accomplish so much, but in reality ends up being just one big gab fest <laughs> catching up let, now let me ask you a question were you a door closer yes and you didn't it didn't bother you no why okay speak to our listeners right now Wh- who's a door closer <laughs> why why would someone why would a teacher a professional close their door to the hallway so you know when like there's this big group of your colleagues out in the hallway and they're all chit-chatting about nothing and meanwhile you want to maximize all of your time there because you've got so much to do. So I'll quietly go close my door and get to work. Are there potential consequences of being a door closer? I guess you could be seen as an extrovert. No, introvert. introvert. There you go. Um, which is funny because I am an extrovert, but sometimes I appear like an introvert. So um, Did you become... I guess you could be seen as snooty or... Did you become more of a door closer when you had children? So yes, when you had to maximize I had your to time, maximize my time at school more efficiently and effectively. But so I, had to, I had to just shut the door. I didn't have time to talk. But speak speak to the person that is a politician. Uh, do you, you do have to be a politician whether you like it or not. But uh, that is a delicate balance between politics and getting your work done. So I'm all about the balance, and I'm all about the um, hustle. And I'm all about having good relationships with my coworkers. So if anyone ever had anything to say, they could just come to my classroom and I could multitask as they were chatting with me about something. And hopefully that's not seen as offensive or rude because it's multitasking. All right, moving on. So um, yeah, don't be mean about it, but if you've got things to do, Shut your door and move along. You know, I, I've been that guy who stuck around too long. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love to talk. I got the gift of gab. But uh, you quickly figure out when your time is, uh, when, when when the teachers are, are busy and they, they're being occupied, look, it, it's time to go. <laughs> All right. You don't want to be a stage four clinger. Okay. So, um, speaking of clingers, <laughs> um, back to school and parents. Um, so, how do you, how do you feel about parents? 
hanging around those first couple oh of days. Oh my gosh. Not Let me just tell you walk something. In their fifth grader. <laughs> We're going to have a, a podcast episode in the future about uh, parent teacher interactions. And my wife can attest to the fact that uh, I was the the grand marshal of, of, of diplomacy when it comes to parent teacher interactions. I had a high, though it would bug me to death, I had a very high threshold uh, for and patience uh, for parents at the very beginning of the year. Look, Those helicopter parents. Well, you know, mom. it takes one and no one, right? Yeah. And so at the beginning of the year, you know, now it takes me having children now to understand, you know, you just want you you're just wanting to ensure that they're going to be in better hands. And you know what? You can't fault parents for that because they are they are uh, seeding a lot of, uh, of faith uh, in you as a teacher to get the job done because you know what they realize parents realize that you're going to have their children the the best gift that they've ever been given you're you're, you're going to be teaching their children for the best of the week not not the rest of the week and they're with they're with their teacher eight hours a day oh, which is a whole lot more time. than they're even home with their family um so speaking of parents if you are looking for a way to um, get to know your students better before the year even gets started it's always great for us to survey the parents. I love hearing from oh, yes. the parents' point of view. So if you check out our Surveys. blog, we do have a parent survey that you can print. It's a free printable. Where can they find our blog at? Um, www.bowtieguyny.com. Click on blog, and then you'll see our back-to-school post there with a link for it. You can also download it on TPT for free. But it's just a great way to begin that partnership with parents and to... Um, let them know that you're invested and that you actually care about their child and you want to know about them. And it just starts the year on a really good note. Can I ask you a question? How many times you find yourself in tears though from the authenticity, the transparency, and the just the realness coming from the parents, especially when it comes to their children reading? Yes. So, you know, your emotions are already high at the beginning of the year. You've got you're, you're sleep deprived, you've got a thousand things to do, but taking the time to sit down and reading the replies from these surveys, yes, it would bring us bring me to tears every single time just because you can hear the heart behind their yes. words and yep. their concerns. A lot of the parents would express they love their children concerns over um, what their child is struggling with or um, their child just frankly not even liking school. So just knowing that from the beginning helps you to really reach out to those families that have had a hard time in the past with school and with those students that need your extra attention. And so, you know, and, and plus in asking the parents, you know, what works for them at home in terms of behavior management. And you know what? You want to be on the same team. I mean, look, no one wants to go to war and, and go, you know, f have, a, have an opponent. You want them to be on your side. So, you know, a great initiation to the school year would be eliciting um, a survey. Uh, to gather some anecdotal information that it's just one piece of the puzzle, baby. Just like with other teachers that you survey the, the prior year. You don't, wanna, you don't want it to be the end all be all, but all of them are just pieces of the puzzle to help inform you, uh, which is the vehicle of, I guess, information to help you teach their children. Okay, so real quickly, I wanted to share just a couple of teacher self-care tips for back to school. The first would be try to fit in a short walk, get some blood flow, clear your mind, go outside for a few minutes. Uh, try to get some sleep. Even though your mind is constantly going, take your phone into another room, charge it in a different place through the night, uh, diffuse some lavender, get it, a new pillow, it whatever sound, it takes. It sounds like you're speaking not only to teachers, but also parents and students as well. Yes. But primarily, we're focusing on teachers. Uh, so, what just, do you have more tips? I was just going to say, do whatever you have to do. Stay away from the caffeine in the afternoon hours. Ooh. Try your best to get some sleep because you'll be so much more productive during that day and have a clear mind when you're properly rested. Another thing would be to try to meal plan, do some crock pot meals Ooh, right now meal before prep. school starts. And that way that's one less thing that has to be on your mind. Pop, pop it in the crock pot in the morning before you leave and that way you're not shoveling down fast food for four nights of the week um, during the first weeks of school because we all know how quickly those pounds can add on and how yeah, it's it can get really out unhealthy drawer. for you anyway. So um, those are just a couple of tips, but most of all, I would just say to remember your why, remember why you're a teacher, remember who you're there for, and the list will get done. 
You know the what? The to-do list will get done. So your final word for the podcast, your list will get done. Remember your why. I'm going to piggyback on what she said because that was some gold right there. But I will tell you, in the fall of 2019, this year, coming up in 2020, we have a census year, so we'll get very refined population figures. But I'll go ahead and tell you that, you know, my final thought for today, look, 56.6 million students entered schools in the United States in the fall. That number is 56.6 million students. But let's go ahead and replace the word students. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, let me tell you something. That's 56.6 million opportunities to change the world. Remember that. that. That's great. Well, you know what? Because there are a lot of you, you may be down and in the, in the dumps about current affairs and the news and all that. But look, that's an awful doggone lot of opportunity. So be the change you want to see in the world to quote my boy Mahatma Gandhi and have yourself a fantastic day. This is the Bowtie Guy and Wife and we'll catch you in the next episode. We'll see you later.